Here it is. Oh no, it is me. I didn't know that. Call the meeting in order. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner. Here. Reverend Campbell. Here. Mr. Hood. Here. Mayor Jones. Here. Mr. Mayo. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. Mr. Saunders. Here. Mr. Vogler. Here. Mr. Whittle. We have an invocation by Dr. Gary Miller, our Vice Mayor, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll ask everyone to please stand. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in these hard times, Help us to have the strength to get through. It's been terrible almost two years now. Many of our friends have passed, many more ill. Our strength is wavering. But help us, help us, give us the strength to press on. We can defeat this plague. We can do the right thing. Survive. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the, flag to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to say good evening to those of you who are here in the Chancellor area. I also want to say to those of you who are viewing us at home and by our River City TV, good evening to everyone. It is a great honor to present a certificate and a proclamation. I'm going to ask Miss Vicki Taylor to please come forward along with, we all know Shannon Hare, one of the leaders of Danville Community College and all that he's doing along with Miss Cheryl Hill. If you all would come forward, please. And good evening to you all. Council gives me a great pleasure to present to Miss Vicki Taylor Whereas Ms. Vicki Holland Taylor served as assistant professor of sociology at Danville Community College from 1971 until her retirement on September the 1st, 2021, 50 years. And whereas Ms. Taylor was the first coordinator of student activities from 1976 to 1981, where she oversaw intramural sports at Danville Community College and was inducted into the DCC Sports Hall of Fame in 2016. And whereas Ms. Taylor served as a faculty advisor to the Upper, Upper Salon Phi chapter of the Phi Theta Kappa International Honor Society, don't ask me to say that again, from 1988 until her retirement. In 2014, she established the Vicki Holland Taylor Phi Theta Scholarship to provide financial support to Phi Theta Kappa members to continue their education at Danville Community College. And whereas Ms. Taylor was chosen by the Danville Community College Student Government Association as the 2005 Outstanding Faculty of the Year recipient. And whereas Ms. Taylor served on the Chancellor's Faculty Advisory Committee for 20 years, serving at times as chair or vice chair while prompting the mission and promoting the mission of Danville Community College at the Virginia Community College system level. And whereas on May 17, 2021, the DCC Educational Foundation Board of Directors established the Vicki Holland Taylor Professional Development Fund in recognition of Ms. Taylor's 50 years of dedicated service to Danville Community College, its students, and the college services region. Now, therefore, I, Alonzo Jones, and member of the Danville City Council, honorably and hereby recognize Ms. Vicki Holland Taylor and express our sincere gratitude for the many lives she has touched through education and community service Congratulations on a well-deserved retirement given under my hand the second day of October 2021. I would also like to share with you, I heard Lee Vogler was one of your students. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give, it, give her a standing applause. Please. Before I give this to you, before I give this to you, I'm going to ask counsel to come down. Let's get a picture with you, and then I'll give you a certificate, and you can make comments. I'll give you this. Counsel, come and join us, please. 
Please feel free to give some comments. Speak right into that microphone, please. Well, I want to thank council for this. It has been my privilege to teach at Danville Community College for 50 years. It was almost my passion to teach, but not just in the classroom, but through student activities, through the student government, and through Phi Theta Kappa. Cheryl was one of my best presidents I ever had. Uh, at DCC, we're family, uh, and it was family from people who cleaned the floors, who did the, uh, did the maintenance in the yards, but the administrative staff, also the administrative assistants. I couldn't do it by myself, and so we are our family. I still have contact with students every time I go somewhere. You taught me, Ms. Taylor. I learned a lot from you, and that makes me feel better than anything in the world, but I do appreciate this. Thank you so much, and thank you for all that you do for uh, our city and uh, for DCC, but I do appreciate this. Thank you so much. Ms. Taylor, there are lots of comments from, for you, and I'm going to start with one of your youngest students, Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still have the form that they all filled out. I have all of them for 50 years. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Uh, yes, Ms. Taylor. I still call you Ms. Taylor, okay? Uh, one of your uh, earlier students. Then I heard Lee Vogler was also one of your students, and Lee and I are probably 50 years apart, so I won't ask you your age, okay? So, but no, I'm, I just made it. But anyway, thank you so much for all that you uh, did for me and for all the students. And I also want to share with the audience, she's also a great dancer. You name the dance, she does it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Hood. Uh, yes, uh, I just want to say, uh, Thank you for your time and dedication to education. You are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I, I didn't know you were a good dancer. I, she, <laughs> she's my walking partner. We see every, each other in the morning about 6 o'clock every morning walking around the neighborhood for years. And uh, I asked her what she was going to do once she retired. She said she was going to redo her house and fix it up. And it might take another 50 years to get that accomplished. <laughs> but, uh, you know, things accumulate. When you're working so hard, you just forget about what's going on at home, but uh, congratulations, just awesome. Thank you. Councilman Whittle. Yeah, um... Turn your microphone on, we wanna hear you. <laughs> Turn your mic on. Turn your mic on. That one there. There we go. Okay, great. Hey, everybody. Um, Mrs. Whittle was on the founding board at, DC, at, at the DCC and she just wanted to thank you also, and, and I do too, and I'm not gonna tell you her age, but she's watching tonight. Oh, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Taylor, I usually go around this way, but someone is anxious to speak, so I'm going to start with Councilman Buckner. <laughs> <laughs> well, just congratulations on a, on a job well done. It seems like you touched many, many lives, and I hope you enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman thank you. Campbell. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say thank you all so May God bless you and enjoy your life. Uh, something my father said, you can't die now. you got too much to live for. <laughs> But I have a question for you. In your years of service, could you just for a few seconds, uh, is there a difference from a young people of when you started and young people of today? Yes. <laughs> Very what are some of the differences? All you have to do is look at the difference between Larry, I mean, Sherman and Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Taylor, I'm going to help you out tonight. <laughs> we <have> no comment. <laughs> Anything else, Councilman Gamble? That's it. I, well, I'm, I think I, uh, I think you've seen this young man around campus, Barry. And it's good to see you, Ms. Taylor, and congratulations. I wear it proud and oh, knowing that you have done your service at DCC and didn't know that you were a dancer. 
And <laughs> you may want to teach Dr. Miller and Lee how to do uh, the wobble. <laughs> they can't get it, and they threw me off even from doing the wobble. But the service that you done. <laughs> Keep. Well, I used to do the dance. We used to have dancers out of the T-Bird on Friday nights, and we had live bands. And the students didn't think I could dance, and so I had to start the dances so everybody else would come out onto the floor. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a lot of fun. We're going to miss you there, and congratulations. Thank you. It's your turn. <laughs> Lee's, <laughs> grand, <laughs> Lee, Lee's responsible for that. Lee's grandfather is responsible because his grandfather was the one who hired me to come to DCC, Wayne McCubbins. Awesome. Blame his grandfather, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a joke about Barry, but then you said something serious, and so I can't. So, um, I, I thank you for for first of all for your many years of service to the community and everything you did, and, and thank you for saying that about my grandfather. And um, for those who don't know, back when when I was a student there, I was still trying to play baseball, and so we always had to have those early morning classes, so our afternoons were free and. Uh, Miss Taylor's class was my first class of the day, and she always did a fantastic job making sure I was awake, which I know was not always, I'm not a morning person to this day, and, uh, but you were an amazing teacher, and I enjoyed those classes very much, and can still picture sitting in your class and, and doing my very best to make sure I was attentive, which you always made sure we were, and uh, I'm very appreciative of that, and I look forward to seeing you out at the uh, Otterbots games uh, for many years to come. So thank you. Plan to be there. Thank it's you so, so important to give people their flowers. Council talks about that all the time and appreciating people. I want you, the reason I want you to hear all that tonight, to hear how sincerely we appreciate everything that you've done, 50 years. Um, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I know Barry Mayo may be there yet, but uh, 50 years, we want to say thank you so much um, for all that you've done. And you said something that was so important, and I walked right into it, that DCC is a family. And Shannon, uh, with all the work that you're doing in the community and for DCC, I mean, he's just always busy. Thank you so much. Uh, when he reached out to me, this is uh, thank you so very much. And Cheryl, thank you for all that you do. Ms. Taylor, anything else you would like to share? No, just keep up the good work here at Council. Let's once again give her a big hand. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask the members of the uh, Doves to come up, please. We got a proclamation for domestic violence. Domestic, is anyone here for the domestic violence? Good evening to you all. This proclamation is read as thus. Um, whereas domestic violence is the willful intimidation, physical assault, battery, sexual assault, and or other abusive behavior as part of a systematic pattern of power and control perpetrated by one intimate partner against another. And whereas in the United States, one in four women and one in 10 men experience sexual violence, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner during their lifetime. In the state of Virginia, one in three women and one in four men have experienced some form of physical violence by an intimate partner. And whereas domestic violence does not discriminate and is prevalent in every community, people of any age, race, gender, sexuality, religion, educational level, nationality, or economic status can be a victim. And whereas only a coordinated community effort would put a stop to this heinous crime and law enforcement officials, those involved with shelters and hotline services, health care providers, and clergy and other concerned citizens are helping in the effort to end domestic violence. And whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an excellent opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing violence and to show support to the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy and assistance to victims. And whereas the city of Danville has a moral obligation to work to prevent domestic violence, address its brutal and destructive effects, and make ending domestic violence a local priority. And therefore, I, Alonzo Jones, the members of the Danville City Council, do hereby proclaim October 2021 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month 
In the city of Danville, it urged all citizens to actively support the work being done toward the elimination of domestic violence. Given under my hand, the seventh day of October, 2021. And please feel free to make comments and thank you all so much. Let's give them a hand for all the work that they do. Good evening. So uh, my name is Deetra Betts and I'm the executive director of Haven of the Dan River region. Um, and one of my favorite quotes, I'm gonna paraphrase paraphrase it, um, the eyes can't see what the mind doesn't know, which is why awareness is very key in identifying what domestic violence is, what it looks like in order to eradicate it. So I thank you all for your support. Thank you for bringing the attention to this community. And um, anyone else? Have and then also, we, um, since this is October, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we're also doing a fundraising. Um, activity, which is October the 23rd from 6 to 9, our Hills to Hills event. And I believe some of you all participated last year and would love to see you all participate again um, this year. I remember some heels that he really worked, he worked those heels on that carpet. And so, <laughs> love to see that again. Um, really appreciate your support. Please introduce your persons that are with you. Yes. So we have Marilyn Waller, she's our sexual assault advocate. And we have Deshawn Farmer. She's on our board of directors. If someone is dealing with domestic she'll, violence. She lives in branch. That's our treasurer. If someone yeah. is dealing with if, if watching and they're going through domestic violence right now, and they, what, would, what, what would be your advisement to them right now if someone is watching and they're going through exactly what we were talking about, what would be your direction to them? They can give us a call. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Slow down a little bit. If there's someone going through this right now, what number would they call? They would call 434-483-5482. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Give that number again. 434-483-5482. Councilman Campbell. Thank you for your services. I have one question. Are the numbers increasing or decreasing? I would say they're increasing. Does that have anything to do with COVID? Can I piggyback, Councilman Kemp? Does that have anything to do with everybody being shut in with COVID? How were the numbers compared now to maybe a year ago when everybody was shut in? COVID does have, has had an impact on the services um, that's needed as far as um, not being able to work and being at home um, and then the, the stress levels of not being able to pay bills. So those things um, increase that component of domestic violence. So give that number one t more time. If a person is, it's a very serious matter, and if a person is dealing with domestic violence because sometimes they're afraid to come forth, am I correct with that? Right. Give that number again, just to, and is that a private number? Who, they get it, who would they be on the other end of the phone if they call that number? So they'll get in contact with one of our crisis advocates, one of our domestic violence advocates or a sexual violence advocate, and we will direct them to the appropriate party so we can um, also refer them to legal aid if they need to get a protection order. Um, provide court accompaniment, so anything that will be able to provide that further support to get them out of that situation. Give that number one more time, please. Yes, sir. It's 434-483-5482. Again, thank you all so much for the great job you're doing, and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce our city treasurer. She has some great news for us. Good evening to you. Just in case you're watching, our city treasurer is Sheila Williamson Branch. Good evening, um, city councilman, our city manager, our deputy city manager, and those in the audience. Um, it is with great pleasure for me to announce once again that the Danville Treasurer's Office um, received its accreditation from the Treasurer's Association of Virginia on June 22, 2021. Uh, this is our second year of this accreditation. The Office Accreditation Program is a voluntary program, certificate program that, over, that is overseen by the Treasurer's Association of Virginia, and 71 Treasurer's Office received this accreditation this year. Uh, while it's not required any Treasurer's Office to be accredited, receiving this accreditation acknowledges that our office meets these um, statewide best practices for performance in treasury management. As part of this accreditation process, offices must successfully pass an outside audit with no findings of material weaknesses. 
Lastly, the rigorous accreditation process also requires proof of continuing education, such as attendance of an ethics course by the treasurer and or other principals, and educational requirements for all staff. Accredited offices are required to have written policies in place addressing areas such as personnel, customer service, and delinquent collections. We have pretty much met the highest standards of excellence and integrity measured by our association, States to Treasury Association President Jeff Schaefer. And they are very proud of our office being this is our second year receiving that award. And I would like to say um, since last year I did receive, I received my Master Government Treasurer certification in 2018. My Chief Deputy now, Vadette Coleman, has her Master Government Deputy Treasurer certification. And again, I have goals set for the office next year. The other two young ladies, um, Jacqueline Dix and Kendra Tucker, will receive their Master Government Deputy Treasurer certification. Council did not want to applaud you while you were, while you were talking, so we will applaud you now. <laughs> 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 Some of the council members, they were ready to applaud, and uh, so they paused. We're very proud of you and what you've done. I know it's been tough, and your office, Councilman Campbell. Yes, you set a standard is hard to beat. We're very proud of you and your office and efficiency. Believe in goals. Yes. And that's Thank been so my much. goal since being in office since 2016. Very proud of you. Thank you. And one last thing. We are going to have our um, money search again. Um, come December 2nd or third and 3rd. So if you think you got some money laying around, please make a phone call. <laughs> make, you we may found 102,000 $102, last year. You may want to tell uh, persons who are watching exactly what does that mean. The, the money search program is uh, through the Department of Treasury for unclaimed property. And every year they're looking for individuals that have monies that have been sent to the state, whether it's on um, a, an account that, was, um, that went dormant at a bank, might have been an insurance policy. It could be any type of monies that may have belonged to you that they never could get in contact with the person. And then they have to send it to the state. So then the state goes out looking for these individuals. So the money search program will be a virtual program as it was back here in June. And you'll have the opportunity to call in and give the information that they request to, um, to check and see if you indeed have any monies with the state. And the date of the money search is? It's going to be December 2nd and 3rd, and we will be sending out information <coughs> sometime in November. So some people may have a very Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, they've had a couple of good Christmas the last two years. Councilman Saunders. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. To Mr. Olean from Branch, thank you for all that you do for our city, and congratulations on your getting another master's degree. I don't know how many you have. <laughs> and you, you do have other master degrees. And you also teach accounting. And we think that's really great. And I know that it won't be very long, cat out the back. We will be calling you Dr. Sheila Williamson Branch, okay? <laughs> thank you very, very much, Mr. Mayor. And thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for letting that cat out the bag. I didn't know that. Councilman Mayo. <laughs> I was going to let the cat out the bag. <laughs> Doctor, great He's job and way to you. set your standards for you and your staff. Congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you. Councilman Whittle. Thank you for what you're doing. Is, so if somebody was deceased, and would they, would the state chase that money down to the yes. heirs, I as guess? as long as the individual has the proper paperwork that they need to um, find that information, all you have to do is make that phone call, and then they'll give them the guidance on what they'll need to do. <laughs> Again, thank you for all that you, I'm sure you want us to also say, Thank you to your staff for doing an yes, amazing please. job that they're doing. Yes. So thank they, you to they you. They very hard. <laughs> thank you to you and your staff. Please extend that back to them, and hopefully, Doctor, we'll be talking real soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Under communications, visitors who desire to speak on an item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. But I first want to introduce a, a new person in our community <clears> from <throat> our Boys and Girls Club. Please come forward, sir, and introduce yourself. And welcome to our community. Good evening to you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Terry. I am the new uh, CEO for the Boys and Girls Club here in Danville. And I'd like to thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak here and watch the proceedings. Uh, I visited here about three months ago. And at that time, this felt like home. Uh, the people were nice. 
the city is absolutely beautiful, the food was good, and the people were nice. Now I said that twice because I have run into nothing but kindness from everyone since I've been here. So what I'm gonna say is I look forward to meeting each and every one of you and working with you as we create programs for our kids to help them to reach their highest potential and they become model citizens uh, in our community here. So thank you and I look forward to meeting and, and talking with each and every one of you. Gary, I, I very seldom see this happens. Sure. But when you were talking about how wonderful our city was, I saw the city manager give you a toast. <laughs> 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 Welcome to our community. Uh, and I appreciate Councilman Saunders say all the time, we never know who's coming through our community. He says it all the time that people are watching. And those comments that you made about our community and the city of Danville is what we strive for. Councilman Vogler next to me, he talks about it all the time. We're trying to make it a comeback city. And those comments mean so much to us. And thank you so much. If council is here for you, as you notice, feel free to come back at any time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Uh, we're still in communication. Anyone who desires to speak on an item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward this time. Please state your name and your address for the record. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Nathaniel Moore, and I live on Cedarbrook Drive, and I am here to ask what are plans or disposition for the Deputy Towns Lee property. I don't know whether that's on the agenda or has it been discussed or will it be discussed? Any decision made on it? Because I would like to know I live in that area and I don't want it to become a dumping ground for just any project that somebody wants to put forward. Mr. Moore, first of all, thank you so much for being here tonight. I think there's gonna be some good news for you. I'm gonna ask the city manager to your right the city manager and deputy city manager, they're going to give you their card and they're going to go through that process with you. I think they have some good news for you and what the process is, what's going to take place with that. So if you don't mind, get with them. They'll give you their card and they'll give you all the information that you need. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Please feel free to come back at any time. Most definitely. Yes, sir. We're still in communication. Anyone who desires to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. We're still in communication. Anyone desire to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Under the consent agenda, I open the public hearing. Anyone who desire to speak on any item on the consent agenda may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on any item on the consent agenda may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Vogel. Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, if you don't mind, please call the roll. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Mr. Mayo. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Vice Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the appointment uh, committee uh, comprised of uh, Councilman Mayo, Councilman Campbell, and myself would like to make the following recommendations, appointments to boards and commissions. A resolution reappointing Alonzo L. Jones to the Danville Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Uh, reappointing Amanda Oaks to the Danville Redevelopment and Housing Authority. A resolution appointing Pat Daniel to the Danville Redevelopment and Housing Authority. A resolution reappointing George Davis to the River District Design Commission. A resolution appointing Fred O. Shanks to the Airport Commission. And a resolution appointing Marva Tuft Tut to the Danville Community Policy and Management Team as the Danville Public Schools representative. Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Reverend Campbell. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Mr. Mayo. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Under item A, consideration of selling parcel number 20792 on Lee Street. I open the public hearing. Anyone who would desire to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. May I make a motion that we approve a resolution approving and authorizing the sale of real property identified as parcel number 20792 to facilitate streetscaping along Lee Street. Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. 
Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Under item B, consideration of transfer of 439 Cedar Brook Avenue to the IDA. I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I might like to make a motion. We approve a resolution approving and authorizing the transfer of real property identified as 439 Cedar Brook Drive, parcel number 59803, from the city of Danville, Virginia, to the Industrial Development Authority of Danville, Virginia. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Whittle. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Under item C, consideration of transferring 1540 Halifax Road to the IDA, I open the public hearing. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Vogler. Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution approving and authorizing the transfer of real property identified as 1540 Halifax Road, parcel 74769 from the City of Danville, Virginia to the Industrial Development Authority of Danville, Virginia. Is there a second by Councilman Buckner? Discussion of the motion? Mm -hmm. Councilman Saunders and then Councilman Whittle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, applaud Council and staff for the last two motions. B and C regarding the schools in Glenwood, Cedarbrook, and the IDA. The IDA, in my view, has an excellent track record of taking these facilities and making them a good use for our city, and it's a win-win for everyone, for the city, the businesses, uh, our citizens, you name it. So I say to our IDA, I know Mr. Neil Morris is, is the uh, chairman of that body, and our staff, thank you for doing what you do every day, and thank you for continuing to make good use of older properties in our city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilman Whittle? Sort of answered my question, but yeah, I agree. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Madam Clerk, if you mind, call the roll, please. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Under item D, consideration of amending the zoning code to add an article 17 entitled Plan Unit Developments. I open the public hearing. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Dr. Miller. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to propose an ordinance amending Chapter 41 entitled Zoning Ordinance of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended by adding Article 17 entitled Planned Unit Developments. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. I would just like to say, uh, Marty, if you and Nadine can come forward. <clears throat> I've read this. If you all can come forward, one of you all can come forward. It's not one, okay. Madison, you had a question? Um, go ahead, Mayor. Call the roll, please. I, I want to say one thing. I thought it was, a, uh, it was good work to be uh, able to get that process moving, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Great job. Uh, Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Bowler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Under item E, consideration of granting a special use permit for a private community facility at 107 Walter Street. I open the public hearing. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion? We approve an ordinance approving a special use permit application 2021-263 filed by Nadine Etchison for a private community facility in accordance with Article 3.E, Section C.17 of the Danville Zoning Ordinance at 107 Walter Street, parcel ID number 21027. 
Second by Councilman Mayo. Now Marty and Nadine, I want you to come forward. Council, I just want, we talked about partnerships. I want you all to hear the wonderful things that they're planning to do for the young people and citizens. And I want to thank you all so much. I read this tr through and through, and thank you all so much. I had to call you, Marty, and thank you because you've been giving back to Tell the uh, council a little bit what you plan your plans are. Um, we plan Speak on- Speak right into that microphone. Good evening, and thank you all for your uh, approval. Um, we plan on opening up, uh, um, pop up, we have pop-up shops, um, flea markets, um, um, games, um, but you, Trunk or treats? It's, it's more it's, her idea. <laughs> we're planning on having, it's not flea markets, pop-up shops for the young entrepreneurs around the city so that they can come in with their arts and crafts and, and, and express their business ventures. It, um, we're also planning on utilizing the property for community programs for uh, Christmas and different holidays. We're planning on uh, putting, um, it's in El Magro, which used to be a township. And I want to put different plaques around that lot to express everything that El Magro came from. So the, pe the community can gather and see the history of El Magro through our eyes. Also, are you planning on doing something with the young people like trunk or treats where they have trunk yes, or treats? Yes, There's a lot of- the holidays, trunk or treat. Christmas, giving out the small gifts, and he's playing that big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say I'm going to give to Councilman Campbell when I talk to you, uh, you know, going into the, uh, one of our progressive neighborhoods in Al Magro. I can't say, couldn't go forward without saying thank you all so much. Councilman Campbell. Yes, uh, you all know how I feel about both of you all. You all are special to me. Mine, I know where you came from. <laughs> but to see how God has blessed you to give back into the community. And it's, it just turns me on. You know, you know, whatever I can do, I'm in your corner. Appreciate it. Appreciate Councilman it. Saunders. Uh, to say thank you for what you're doing for the entire community, which also means for our city. Um, Reverend Bridgeworth always come down to the council meeting, and we're certainly praying for him from Shallow. And I know he loves and support, support what you're doing. And I have a special place in my heart for your community, Mr. Betts. When I joined a certain fraternity, he initiated me, and I will <laughs> never, ever forget him. And I love that man. So congratulations. Thank you all for what you're doing. Thank you. Councilman Mayo. Just, just for you all continuing the history, that's what I love. It's the fact that you're continuing to let the young people know where the Alma Grove uh, um, is a symbol of in this area and right here in Danville. Thank you all for doing that. Let us know what we can do for you, and we're proud of you. We're proud of you. Thank you all so much again. Thank you for coming up. Didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you, uh, when I read it and we talked, it just means so much as Councilman Saunders stated to help move Danville forward. Thank you all so much. Madam Clerk, uh, Councilman, Dr. Miller, sorry. Yeah, one of the highlights of my year, year has always been to go to the July, approximately the fourth celebration. People who lived in El Negro come back. They're proud of their community. Uh, I've met people from Baltimore, from Michigan. You know, they moved away, but every year they come back. And it's just a great celebration. And they welcome people. Obviously, I didn't grow up there, but I felt part of the community. So it, it's a great thing that you're doing. Thank you, sir. Will, this, will you be able to have the, once this past tonight, will you be able to have the trunk or treats this year? Or you, you, that'll be next year? Because you know, safety for the kids, is that something you plan on doing this year? We would love to if we can get the ball rolling enough. We have to go through the formalities first. Sounds and good. still working on building up the lot. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much again for all that you do. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, Sue looked at me and said, just wait a minute. <laughs> if you can call the roll, please. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Again, Martin and Nadine, congratulations, and thank you all so much for what you're doing. Under item F, consideration of granting a special use permit for an accessory building or accessory use at 409 Arnett Boulevard. I open the public hearing. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I want to say good evening to you both and welcome. Good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm Albert Payne. I represent Trinity United Methodist Church, and this is Pastor Barbara Kusar. And uh, we're here to hopefully 
agree with you guys of passing this uh, project that we have that we feel like Danville City does a great job providing food for people in need. Uh, but this is something a little bit different in that this building will represent a place that people can come 24-7, 365 days a year to find food uh, on emergency type food available. We'll have things like devotions, we'll have things like information about where food is available throughout the city throughout the week and um, things like that, that that we think will be like a mission house in the parking lot of the church. So many wonderful things are happening in our community and so many partners and People are doing a great job to have 24 hours for persons. Sometimes we, walk, we don't know the situations of individuals. You ride through at night when we leave, you see people because they fall on rough times. And now they have a place where they can go and get anonymously and get food and different things like that for 24 hours. Wow. Any questions, Council? Thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you. We're still in public hearing. Anyone else desire to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone else who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance approving a special use permit application 2021-297 filed by Trinity United Methodist Church for an accessory building for accessory use without a per primary building located on the parcel in accordance with Article 3.E, Section 3C.23 of the City Zoning Ordinance at 409 Arnett Boulevard, parcel ID number 05074. Second by Councilman Campbell. On the item G, consideration of, of denying rezoning 924 Arnett. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me. Roll call. Oh, call the roll, please. May, may, may I? Excuse yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say to Trinity Methodist Church, thank you for being in our community. Also, thank you for welcoming me to your church several, several times. And I am so glad that you care about people, care about the community, and I think everybody would agree with that. And on Saturdays, you make some of the best hot dogs there really are. <laughs> so thank you all very much. <laughs> you know what Dr. Miller's going to ask, right? Uh oh, uh, beef hot dogs. <laughs> beef hot dogs. Beef, beef, beef. <laughs> Not chicken dog, but beef hot dogs. Not turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Under item G, consideration of denying rezoning 924 Arnett Boulevard, I open the public hearing. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who desires to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, deny rezoning 924 Arnett Boulevard. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Whittle. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Councilman Buckner, you will do number three, please? Yes, sir. Um, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we deny. Wait a minute. We're doing H? Okay. So, so he see, D is good. We had two in the under G. They good? To deny. Thank you. Under item H, consideration of authorizing the acceptance of parcel 22179 on Crack A Street, Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a resolution approving and authorizing acceptance of real property identified as parcel 20, I'm sorry, 22179 Craighead Street to enhance scenic outdoor recreation activities. Second by Councilman Whittle. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Mr. Mayo. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. On item I, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for housing and urban development funds. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Vogler. Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for projects to be or being undertaken to improve the Danville community finance with community development block grant home investment partnership funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and estimated program income for a total appropriation of 
$1,245,901. First reading. Second by Councilman Buckner, Councilman Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Of course, I certainly uh, support uh, this matter. I just have a question. I, when I read the package about the $1.2 million and we talked about the fiscal year 2021 uh, and now 2122, uh, was it the same dollar amount, $1.2 million, last fiscal year that is this fiscal year as well? I saw two fiscal years. I want to make sure I got the dollar amount right for each one. Actually, last year we received thirty-four thousand one hundred and forty-four dollars less. So it's actually increased for the next fiscal year. Okay, but the plan is the same as far as the distribution as attached. Correct. The same. The plan is the same. It's just we've got slightly more money. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Whittle. There's a fifteen percent of it that you can use in another discretion. It's a, we have a 15% administrative cap that we use to help offset salaries and other things for employees. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. First reading. Under item J, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for grant funds from the Department of Homeland Security. Dr. Miller. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance, proposed ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance to provide for a grant from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management in the amount of $115,360.91 and a local share in the amount of $11,536.09 for extrication equipment for three fire trucks for a total appropriation in the amount of $126,897 and appropriating same. Second by Councilman Mayo, first reading. Under item K, consideration amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for a grant from the Department of Juvenile Justice for electronic monitoring and outreach detention programs and prevention services, pro-social skills program. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion we approve an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance from the, for a grant from the Department of Juvenile Justice in the amount of $86,999 and a local share of $39,830 for a total appropriation of $126,829 to provide for the electronic monitoring and outreach detention programs and preventive, preventative services pro-social skills program for the city of Danville at the W.W. Moore Detention Home and appropriating the same first reading. Second by Councilman Mayo. Under item L, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for a grant to aid food service operations at W.W. Moore Junior Detention Home, Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for a federal grant in the amount of approximately $38,681 to aid with the food service operations at W.W. Moore Detention Home and appropriating the same first reading. Second by Councilman Whittle. We see our director from W.W. Moore is here. Please stand so we can thank you for all the work that you're doing for us. Give her a hand, please. <laughs> Under communication, city manager. Thank you. Deputy city manager. Thank you. City attorney. Thank you. City Clerk, roll call, please. Uh, yeah, I just want to um, <clears throat> quickly acknowledge something that's transpiring this weekend at the Danville City Auditorium. Um, it's a gentleman named Wayne Waller, and he has a partner who they call Southside Clyde. But they are actually putting an event together called The Big Show. Um, it's significant because 10 years ago, he came out and did the exact thing. Wayne Waller was uh, um, very involved with Parks and Rec in the 80s as they put together a, a breakdancing group called the B-Boys. So when you're coming from where I'm from, that was really significant with us to go see them, even as they were in the parade in the 80s. But on um, this Saturday, he's doing the big show again. And again, 10 years ago, he did this where he, was able, where he allowed youth performers to do music. Um, so at the time, he utilized hip hop music. So what he did, he, well, he allowed them from the streets to come in and perform, but he wanted to put it on a bigger platform for them. So what he did, he actually put together a show, sent radio commercials and TV commercials. Radio commercials were on 102 Jams, a station out of Greensboro, which majority of our youth know and listen to. So what he did, he allowed them to practice and put together a 15-minute set per group. 
to give back to the community. This right here pulled them from the streets. It actually pulled students from the communities. Everybody was able to come out and see something that maybe would not have that attention shone on them at those times. So this Saturday, he's doing it again. It's the big show. It's a 10-year anniversary. He has the radio stations involved again, and he's allowed them to come and display their talent with, with no rewards that he's actually looking for outside of giving them a platform or something that they didn't really have a chance to do before. So I just wanted to give him a shout out and say it's this Saturday at the Danville City Auditorium at 7 o'clock. How much are the tickets and how do they get tickets for uh, young people? Tickets are $1, I'm, I'm sorry, $10 at Eventbrite. <laughs> Like that first yeah. answer better, right. Wanda. <laughs> so how do they get the tickets where? Uh, you could get them at Eventbrite or you could purchase them at the door. Um, actually, they uh, invited me to host it 10 years ago, and they brought me back this year. And I like doing it because I get the opportunity to encourage the community, encourage kids that wouldn't be out or wouldn't be in that platform or have the opportunity to be able to do something of this magnitude. So we get a chance to really encourage them and continue to push forward our city and, and letting people know that we have eyes on you, even though it may not be in certain parameters that you normally would be used to. Is there a, community, a contact number from your end that p parents can call you if they want to get tickets for the kids? Uh, yeah, they could call me um, at 434-429-5698. Uh, and again, the gentlemen that are uh, putting this together is Clyde and Wayne Waller. And it's Saturday at the City Auditorium? It's Saturday at the City Auditorium. Great job. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Thank you. Um, just piggybacking off of uh, Brian, that, that is a good thing. And we have to continue to not only support the community, but all to give out the information to what's out here. Um, wanted to uh, also mention about a past medical center partner with Danville Community College today to give uh, COVID-19 uh, testing. And we've had a, a it was low turnout, but the effort is always there. Um, and uh, we, myself and Mayor Jones and a lot of staff, we were all there to um, welcome people to coming in. You can see the, the nervousness and still in individuals who are still uh, wanting to just get an understanding. But the fact that we had our staff there to comfort them, uh, we had a DCC nurses there to really give them a lot of um, hand and even the PAV staff. Um, but the one thing that I want to pinpoint out was we had a young lady and want to mention names that she came up and she, uh, like like all, she was afraid and she was uh, just just concerned. But she knew she wanted to do it. And the thing that really uh, touched the hearts was that the fact that she's uh, she pregnant and she just wanted to do its best to helping uh, not only herself but an unborn child. So. For that right there, we were just at all and giving the credit to each and every out there. And we want to continue to push that to uh, our citizens. Uh, we got we to gotta keep working. We got to keep working. We got to keep um, educating. And we got to keep pushing this vaccine. Uh, we know Moderna is going to be coming out with theirs. And we are, uh, we are on board and being ready for that. But just the vaccine itself, educating, keep talking to the families. Keep talking to your loved ones because it's happening every day. I think Dr. Miller, he'll tell you, uh, death is happening every day, not only through COVID, but COVID is a big issue right now with death. And so um, we just have to keep uh, keep emphasizing to our citizens and to all that continue to take, uh, take initiative to, to taking the vaccine because until we do that, it's not going anywhere. And um, last but not least, Welcome, uh, Mr. Terry, to the city and our, our fraternity chapter. Omega Psi Phi will be hosting an event at your center next month on the 13th. We're going to uh, get a basketball clinic for all boys, ages 7 all the way up to high school. And if they come, they get to learn a lot of things, not only with skill of a basketball, but uh, life skills. We teach them etiquette, we teach them hygiene, we teach them behaviors, and we have to reach out to our kids as much as we can. So we want to let you know that uh, we're glad to have you. We want to welcome you there. Um, and for all who participate, we'll get a free haircut. Uh, we have barbers that they can go to, and we're going to be paying for that. And uh, so we're pushing that effort out there. It's going to be a, a, 
November the 13th at Boys and Girls Club from 9 to 12. We will feed them. And so if any of you out there listening, please contact the Boys and Girls Club if you're interested in coming. And for all who come, we'll get a free haircut. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it, it's sad, but it's glad. Uh, Linwood Wright passed away recently, and everybody in this room knows what Linwood Wright do, did for this city over the many years. And we just really ought to celebrate him. And I, I don't know if any, uh, he's done so much for the city, if we have any plan to present a plaque or something to the family uh, for Linwood. Uh, he was just an outstanding person. And I'm not going to tell you all what he did, but I saw him the night he died. Uh, he was at the hospital and he was going home. And he was very weak. And uh, he said he appreciated me coming by. And he wanted me, he said, uh, please come by my house. Uh, we need to talk about the city. And some ideas he had. So up until the very end, this man was trying to promote Danville and help Danville. He died later that night. But uh, just a great man. Uh, we attended uh, Madison and uh, uh, the deputy uh, mayor, uh, uh, Earl, and Larry Campbell and I attended, attended this past week the VML meeting. And it was, as usual, a good meeting. You get to interact with uh, city leaders from all over the state, exchange ideas, see what they're doing. Uh, they asked us a lot about what we were doing. Uh, some of the talks were on blight and housing, and Danville was mentioned as, as um, being very, inter, uh, very uh, leaders of that. Uh, uh, the River District uh, was mentioned. Uh, uh, the RIFA organization, nobody, ha nobody else has that. Workforce is a problem with everybody uh, in the state, uh, getting their workforce. Rescue services, uh, getting volunteer rescue people. That's become a big problem, and it's a problem for us. You know, we have paid and volunteer. You know, our county's been having trouble with rescue squads, and, and you know, if they don't provide the service, you know, the city has to often backs them up. So it's a problem all over the state. Solar energy was mentioned. Uh, people are just now getting into that, and we're way ahead of the curve on, on solar energy and broadband. So it was uh, just a very good meeting, uh, and I invited a lot of people to come to our VML conference we're going to have at our new resort casino in 1024. We're trying to get that. We, we can easily handle the number of people that came to that convention. And people, when I invited them, they said, yeah, we've not been down to Danville. We'd like to come down, uh, not just for the uh, casino, but just to see Danville and all the things we were doing. So we've got to get to work and get that through because I've invited a lot of people going to show up at my house wondering where the meeting is in about three years. <laughs> uh, but it was just a, a great thing. And then finally, uh, uh, COVID. Oh, oh, I also uh, ran in ate dinner the other night with uh, Robert Roop, who's the principal in the Timmons Group. Uh, he was up from Raleigh, and the Timmons Group's helping us with the white mill development. So it was a good time to exchange and see what ideas they have for develop, helping the white mill in the river. Um, and finally, the COVID. Um, one of these days, I'm going to quit wearing this mask to the meetings, but not until we, things get better. I read an interesting statistic that about one out of every 400 rural <clears throat> citizens who get COVID die now, which is higher than the fatality rate in cities. Now, why is that? Uh, at one time, somebody got really, really sick and, and needed tertiary or third higher level care. We could transfer them to a medical center. We can't do that anymore. They don't have any beds. And this is not just for COVID patients. We tried one patient who was very sick, uh, they called 14 different hospital systems to try to get this person transferred to get a special treatment. Uh, and as far as Arkansas, and they've even called Arizona sometimes, and they can't get transfers. Just nobody has beds. Uh, all the 99% of the people on ventilators are not vaccinated. You can still get COVID. They never promised that the shot would make you immune to getting COVID, but the case is much milder and people aren't dying if they get a case. Uh, some of our, our immunities are wearing out. Uh, it's been seven to eight months since our first shot, so that's why I strongly recommend you get the booster. Um, and I had my third one last Friday night and had my worst reaction yet. I had a sore arm. So, uh, you know, uh, it lasted for about 12 hours and then it was gone. So that was, you know, the chance of you having a severe reaction from the shot is like one in 12 million. 
chance of you dying if you get COVID is about one out of 400. So we, we've got to get people getting the vaccine. The rural areas are suffering the most right now. We don't necessarily have all the facilities, but also our vaccination rate is so low. In South Side and Southwest Virginia, 37, 40% overall, and that's why we're suffering. And now it's switched from people dying in the cities to people dying in the rural areas. So protect your self, protect your babies. Uh, a 35-year-old woman died at our hospital, it worked at the hospital, didn't get her vaccination, left two children. A uh, 50-year-old grandmother got COVID, died, left uh, just a whole slew of grandchildren. A 10-year-old died in uh, Chesapeake this past week, 10 years old. This new variant is striking the young people much harder than the first round. So if you don't, for any other reason, get the vaccine for your children. So enough said, we need to get everybody vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Also, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I, we just can't say enough about the vaccine. And I'm sure everyone knows someone who passed away from COVID. Um, I lost a very good friend in Florida, a school teacher who got uh, COVID. And within three weeks, uh, this person was gone. And so it, it's, it's important to get, to get that vaccination. And I, and I say to Mr. Mayo, to Ms. Marshall Mendinghall, and all the, the people that passed, thank you all for what you do every day in helping people and making yourself available and all over Danville, Pennsylvania County, and not just in your office, but you go out to the people and we thank you so much for doing that. Regarding uh, Luma Wright, um, a dear friend, uh, certainly I'm um, praying for his family. It was my honor in 1996 to vote for Luma Wright as mayor of our city. And I really appreciate uh, that opportunity to do that. Um, all of you know, I'm sure, that I had the illness several years ago and when I came home, uh, Luma Wright was the first person to come to my house to check on me. And, and he just, uh, as uh, the Vice Mayor said, he's just a, a caring person, good person, hardworking person as well. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if Mr. Vice Mayor want to add some comments to what I'm about to say now, but um, I, I condolences to the family of Mayor Sherman Lee, uh, the mayor of Roanoke. Uh, he lost his wife. And the service, I think, is going to be uh, this weekend, which is start tomorrow. But anyway, so I, I want him to know uh, Mayor Lee is from Danville. His wife is also from Danville. And we certainly uh, pray for him, uh, his son, family, and others these are some very sad times. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind us things happen pretty fast and sometimes people get things a little confused. I can't tell you how many calls um, I've received um, at home on my cell phone expressing condolences, okay, uh, for the passing of my wife who has not passed. Uh, Sherman uh, Lee was the mayor of Roanoke. Sherman Saunders was the mayor of Danville. And people, as even today, said they heard on the radio, we are sorry to announce the passing of the wife of Sherman, a uh, mayor, Sherman Lee Saunders. So it's out there. And at the time the first call came, I was at my wife at a meeting in Martinville. Needless to say, it got my attention, okay? So I, I appreciate, I'm sure we all do, the condolences that people express, but um, it, it, it's good to get um, the facts, and some people realize that because when they called me, they were reluctant to say why they called me. And then when it came out, um, anyway, so we were praying for uh, Mayor Sherman Lee and his family, and we certainly hope that they're gonna, gonna be doing well, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, Dr. Miller wanted to have a... Yeah, Dr. I just Miller want to add on to that. Uh, 
I look for Sherman Lee at the meeting this week. We always run into Sherman. There are certain people you know from across the state and you always want to uh, re reunite with, and um, Sherman Lee is one of them, and uh, I look for him and, and uh, with the Rona contingent. Uh, so it was, um, I'm saddened that his, his wife had passed, but he's just a, it, um, just a wonderful man. And, uh, you know, just like our mayor was a, a great mayor he's, of our city, he was, uh, our Sherman was a great mayor. He was a great mayor of Roanoke. So uh, our condolences to him and his family. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Miller, as, as far as uh, the, the VML conference, I say uh, speak it, believe it, receive it. Uh, we, will, uh, we will have that conference here. I, I feel that we're going to make that happen. Uh, I did want to start tonight with um, something very serious. Uh, my softball team had a game tonight that uh, obviously I was not at uh, since uh, I was here. I had to keep my perfect attendance at these council meetings. So, But I did just get a text, and they won tonight, uh, the Sandlot Hustlers, 19-7. to 7. So, fellas, if you're watching, I'm proud of you. Good job, and I'll see you next week. Um, moving on to uh, more, more important things. Um, Biscuitville next Tuesday is doing their fundraiser uh, event. You know, every once in a while, we all love Biscuitville, and they, they're open, you know, they close at 2 o'clock, uh, except for special occasions they open for dinner. And then on these nights, they have different organizations um, that participate, and you can go and when you get your food that night, I believe 20% of, uh, of your uh, ticket goes towards the organization of your choice that you mentioned. Well, uh, and there are a lot of great organizations, and I'm sure folks watching, you might know some who are already going to be involved with this, but I'm going to give a plug to the, to the Kiwanis Club. Since I'm the president of Kiwanis Club, I better uh, ask that if you don't already have an organization you want to support if you go this Tuesday to Biscuitville, uh, that you uh, mention the Kiwanis Club when you get your dinner, and it'll go to the club, and, and we do a lot of great work in the community. Uh, particularly with young people. But uh, this Tuesday, Biscuitville, 5.30 to 8.30, they're doing their fundraiser dinners uh, for several different organizations in the community. Uh, Linwood Wright, I mean, as, as many have already said, um, what, what a, um, an amazing man and, and a, a advocate for this community for a number of years. I can think many times Linwood and I had uh, long conversations. I'd sit in his office uh, and we'd be talk about any number of things um, and, and phone calls, you know, where he really um, laid out a, a vision. I, I mean, first of all, the, the, his wealth of knowledge and history about this, this city and this region was of tremendous benefit to me. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I would ask him questions about things and learn so much from him. But even beyond that, though, the vision for the future he had was always astounding to me. And, you know, I don't know if, if I've seen it or I've read it over the last week or so since the news, but it's really important. Um, school field, that site that Caesars is going on, Linwood was one of the strongest advocates for the city taking ownership of that property. And at the time and for a while, you know, People, council, we caught some flack for it and, and heat for it, um, but Linwood had the vision. I can't say that Linwood knew that a $500 million Caesars was ever going to be there, but Linwood knew the importance of the city making sure that that site didn't waste away and that, that uh, something better would come there. And so Linwood was a strong advocate for that, and I think now, you know, when we look at Caesars, when we're there on that ribbon cut, and I'm going to be thinking about Linwood, because I remember the night we were sitting across that hall when he told us how important it was uh, to, to do what we ended up doing and what ultimately would become Caesar. So, uh, Linwood, man, we're, we're really going to miss you. Uh, another very important person uh, in the community, maybe not quite as well known as, as Linwood was, but someone who, who certainly uh, touched this community in, in many ways, also passed away recently, uh, uh, Dolores Reynolds, um, who the name might not pop right off to some people, but... Um, I know council members who've, who've been here as long as I have, and of course those longer, um, will remember the lady who sat in the front row of council meetings, every council meeting for probably five years straight or longer, and would attend um, committee meetings and the work sessions and, and just so many different meetings and, and 
things in the community. She was active in local politics and volunteering for campaigns, and she just did so many great things. Um, and on a personal level for me, I know everyone who, who's sitting up here obviously has, has run for office and, and been successful, and I know that, that each of us will remember the first time you ran and, and some of those early, early supporters and people who got behind you and those first doors that you knocked on, those are the ones that stick with you all these years later. Uh, and for me, Dolores was one of the first people uh, that I ever knocked on a door for. And, um, and one of the first people that ever put my sign in her yard. And then she went and made sure that just about everybody on her block did it too, because she was very persuasive and, and very, uh, very, you know, um, just a go-getter. But she was a sweet, sweet lady. And uh, I will certainly miss seeing her, not only at these council meetings, but, but just in general. Um, and lastly, uh, speaking about the COVID vaccine and, and things of that nature, uh, Tomorrow, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the community market, uh, is that still happening? Ken, anybody? If I'm saying it wrong, I don't... All right, well, I know it was posted, so I'm assuming it's still on for tomorrow. Um, from 1 to 4 p.m. at the community market, there's going to be a COVID vaccine uh, opportunity for folks. They're doing the Pfizer vaccine. And um, for those who have not gotten it, for those who are eligible to get the, the booster, they're doing it. You don't need an appointment. You can you can walk up and and not only that they're also offering the uh, the flu the flu shot flu vaccine uh, as well for those that it's certain it's getting into that time of the year so even if you're you're up to date on the COVID vaccine you want to go ahead and get your flu shot uh, you can get that there as well again that's at the community market tomorrow uh, downtown on Craghead Street uh, from one to four p.m. Uh, and that's all I have to nightmare thank, thank you. you and may I add you can get both of them the same day. Rule. You don't have to wait a month between the two. Tell them, tell them which both you're talking the about. The flu and the COVID shot, you can get them. By, and they're estimated by next year they may be combined in the same shot. So it's safe to get both. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. I came to Linwood. I asked him one day. I said, uh, Linwood, when are you going to retire? He said, well, um, when I finish that school field project. And so go I went in and talked to Linwood. I said, Linwood, when are you going to retire? He said, as soon as I finish that school field project. Uh, so it, it was never give up. And uh, he was, uh, uh, he had a, um, he, he had a great vision for the city. Uh, and and um, back it up. Uh, did do uh, the Virginia Municipal League this weekend, and it was a, uh, uh, a lot of great information, uh, and a lot of people are asking, uh, what are we doing uh, different in Danville than other folks? And I heard this old whisper in the back, and it said, it's, uh, uh, it's basically that the ones who have the most information win. Earl. He was right, so uh, that, that was all I had to say, and, <laughs> and we moved right on through the evening. And uh, it was it was a really good. McDam was spoken highly of, and um, you know, uh, couldn't keep up with Larry, and uh, and Earl was pushing. So, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and Dr. Miller, we uh, uh, the, the, these people we had, uh, you know, different different. Um, avenues that were coming down from the Supreme Court to the states, to the cities, um, <coughs> you know, uh, blight eradication, which is, is, doing, is, is going well in the, in the city, um, and, uh, you know, leaning in on the housing problem uh, that we have and that everybody has, labor, um, you know, and, and a good one was let's, let's try to get these vets hired out that are capable of doing um, any of these jobs that are available here, they're already trained. Um, I'd suggest that if um, there's an opportunity uh, to reach out for our city government or any uh, Caesars, anybody else that's coming, let's uh, let's do what we can to um, push in to get those veterans. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. I believe Mr. Larkin has something he would like to say. Yeah, I just want to confirm um, Councilman Vogler was correct. Uh, at the community market this Friday, one to four, 
it's a, um, the health department is running a, a Pfizer vaccine event. So. I'll accept and walk-ins, walk-ins. Yeah, if you, were, if you meet the criteria of those who are able to get the shot, yes. Mr. Mayor, is it true, Dr. Miller, you're saying it's only 40% in Danville and Pennsylvania County? Well, in Southside. Southside. Yeah, in, in the rural areas. In the rural area. Yeah. What about that the city of Southwest and Southside. What about the city of Danville? It, uh, I looked it up. The latest number for Danville is 63% have received of adults have received their first shot, have at least received their first. I think it's down to 50 something that are fully vaccinated. But so it's getting better. Um, and when you look at Danville compared to the surrounding area, Danville is performing better uh, than a lot of the surrounding counties. Uh, which I mean is uh, you know we want everybody in our region, of course, to be vaccinated because. Uh, that's uh, helpful to, to be careful of those 63% because that includes the J and J vaccine, which is one shot, which they've now shown as I predicted a long time ago, you were going to need another shot. So they've lumped all those together. I just got it from the state. Website. 63% have had at least one shot, but that's not, they're not fully protected. So it's lower than that. Is but still, any, uh, but we, we are yeah. making progress. Yes. The is any pre progress, but slow. Is there any pre-registration for tomorrow? Pre-registration? So, no. So just, just walking, if so, give that time again, Ken. It's a one to four tomorrow at the community market. No pre-registration, walk-in yep. is gonna happen, thank you so much. And I sent some information to Mark uh, via text if he wanted to post a link on the, uh, that'll give people all the correct information. It's probably the best way to do it. Great, thank you. Yeah. Madam Clerk? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Clerk, um, Sue. I, earlier today, I was having lunch at uh, Delano's here on Main Street, and, and on the, each table, they have a little um, place card there that says, hands are not for hitting. October is divest, Domestic Violence Month, um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Domestic violence is often considered a hidden issue, but it doesn't have to be that way. Raise awareness about the signs of domestic violence. Talk to your friends and family, coworkers and neighbors. Together we can end domestic violence. And this is something that was put out by Haven of the South Side. There are many, many, many organizations for folks to reach out to. If you're experiencing domestic violence in any way, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody you trust. Let them know. Um, and if you're somebody that's reached out to, let the person know that it's not okay. Uh, domestic violence is, is not acceptable and, and everyone deserves better. As humans, we deserve better. Um, please reach out to anyone at Haven of the South Side or Doves. Um, there's two organizations that come to mind. Doves was here earlier and they left a phone number for folks. And again, I know they repeated it many, many times, but the phone number again was 434-483-5482. You do no longer have to be a victim. You have help. There are people in this community, there are officers in this community that are willing to help anybody that's in that situation. Please get out of it. Um, to the family, friends, and coworkers of Linwood Wright, you mean so much to every one of us. You did so much for this community that 99% uh, of the people in this city will never know the contributions that Linwood Wright gave to this city. And um, Linwood, you will, you will be tremendously missed. Um, I was having a conversation with a, a colleague earlier this week, and um, it kind of touches back to what you were just saying, Madison, what Earl told you, uh, the one with the most information is the one that wins the race. And this person said something that was really, you know, it, it, lots of folks are, are paying attention to what we're doing here in, in Danville. And this person was from out in the Tidewater area. And um, he said to me, from the way things are going, and I'm gonna quote this guy the best I can, he said, in 10 years, Danville will be leaps and bounds ahead of all others in the state of Virginia in jobs, in resources, in uh, workforce development, in, in housing and everything. He said, somehow or another, you guys have figured it out. And it's an army of folks that are working together to have this thing figured out. And, and just so you know, folks from all over the 
the state of Virginia and probably the whole East Coast are, are paying attention to what we're doing here. And, and one thing that, that I absolutely love about this council and, and our staff and everybody that works here with our city, we don't settle. You know, when, when, when we get a great announcement, when we get, you know, something real exciting happen, we are all just on 10 about it. And then we go right back to work and we decide what's next, what can we do next? How can we improve the city of Danville? What can we bring here for people? What can we do to improve the lives and livelihood and, and entertainment and everything, we, anything you can imagine? There are folks working around the clock. Their wheels never stop turning. Um, and I, I just congratulate you all and hats off to you all for the hard work that you're doing. Um, let's keep it up. And last but not least, Ken, I'm gonna lean on you for a minute. I've had several folks reach out to me about the home sign. Um, that's across the way here, and uh, I, I could quote a few of them, but I won't. <laughs> but just uh, wondering why it's down or, or why it's uh, not working or, or what we're waiting on to get that thing back up and going. That's a very cool feature for us to have, and I like for it to be shining bright. Yeah, the, uh, the home sign's owned by the Historical Association, but we have an agreement uh, to uh, provide the power, and we recently modified the agreement where we would actually do we would handle getting any repairs done. Uh, however, they, they actually repair, it, it goes down quite frequently uh, and we try to keep an eye on it and get it <coughs> repaired. But uh, my understanding is that uh, um, Bill Screenia with Parks and Recreation is aware that there's an issue and has reached out to the vendor to get it repaired, but there's still a lag of time between when, it can, when it's reported and when it can get fixed. But I don't know the specific details of why it's down at this point. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. But we are working to get that thing fixed, right? That's my understanding. Unless it's been repaired since the last time, it has then broke again, okay. which I can find out. But we'll, I'll follow up and make sure. Thank you, sir. Yep. That's all tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I just want to say to Mr. Terry, thank you so much. Not only have you come into the community, I say this all the time. Council likes when I say this because we mean it to everybody coming in our community. Welcome home. So thank you so much for what you're doing and what you plan on doing. I'll be very brief. This week and last week, I've especially this week, I've had as the mayor, I've had I sat at home and I thought about three mayors. Uh, mayor former I don't want to call them former mayors. Mayor Linwood Wright, Mayor Sherman Lee, and Mayor Sherman Saunders. And as I was celebrating my daughter's birthday yesterday. Um, we got a message from Mayor Sherman Saunders, and we were actually praying for Corey and her staff with Linwood, and my experience with Linwood is totally different than many because I got a chance to go to his office once a week and sit in that little teeny chair because I'm six foot four, Corey, and I sit in that little chair, and Linwood would look down at me in that chair in his little small office. And oftentimes we talk about the trenches, but Linwood and Council and the former mayors actually got in the trenches with me. And so when I thought about Councilman Mayor Linwood Wright and Mayor Sherman Lee and Mayor Sherman Saunders, mm -hmm. yesterday at dinner, my daughter was asking me as I was sitting in the booth alone, she had about 20 guests there, and she said, Daddy, you, what's wrong? Are you acting anti-sociable? She said, you act like you don't want to be bothered. And they had this long table, and I said, Buckner, I sat by myself. And you know how Shanice is. <laughs> and she said, Daddy, what's wrong? And I was sitting there thinking about these mayors and all that these mayors have given and give. And then I looked at my phone, and Councilman Saunders sent the message in regards to the misinformation in regards to his wife. And I didn't say anything to my, I just couldn't imagine what he was going through to get that misinformation. And I think about how much we give, as Councilman Buckner stated, and how much we give to the city. And it's great news when everyone is excited, and we like for everyone to be excited, Mr. Terry, about what's going on in Danville. But these persons around these tables, and these persons around these tables, as I thought about it last night when I was sitting out back, there's been so much misinformation that we have had to deal with on top of growing this community. So much misinformation. And it really hurts sometimes 
but you still have to smile, as Councilman Buckner said, you still have to build. And on top of that, we haven't even mentioned the number of people in our families, the number of people in our community. Councilman Mayo is sitting here tonight, and his nephew passed yesterday. And when we walked in here tonight, he and I, I just wanted to hug him and said, how are you doing? And we had a conversation about his nephew who died yesterday. And then all of, everywhere we go, we hear of the number of deaths that are occurring in this community and the surrounding community. And then we have a doctor that sits here and people are getting tired of us talking about COVID, COVID, COVID. We're not trying to pound it in anyone's head, but it's the reality. The reality is people that are close to us are passing away. People also don't know that Councilman Campbell gave his testimony and he gave his testimony several times in regards to how his wife passed with COVID. It was heart wrenching. Tomorrow, Councilman Campbell has to do a graveside service for another dear person who passed. Imagine what he has to go through tomorrow. Again, he has to do the eulogy again. So to council members, I say this oftentimes to you, our prayers are with Linwood's family. I plan to be there on Saturday for the home going service. Um, to the Lee family, as Councilman Saunders stated, our prayers are with you because last week his wife's aunt passed on Saturday. And on Sunday morning, we got a call that his wife passed. And Councilman Saunders, I'm sorry for the misinformation that has gone through the airways, but you have a beacon in this community. And I don't know, I, I, last night I was sitting at, at Outback and when you sent that message out, it just tore my heart all to pieces. And where prayers and thoughts are with you and your living wife who is, he sent us a beautiful picture to let us know, once again, Councilman Mayor Sherman Saunders' wife is doing fantastic. She's doing very well. And if you all can help us sometimes to put an end to this miscommunication, uh, Danville Public Schools, I want to remind everybody once again, please, 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 for some reason, get out and vote. I don't care who you vote for, but I, we definitely wish, wish you vote yes for DPS. Our schools, our school staff, to all the teachers, to all of the faculty, to all of the workers of Danville Public Schools, we appreciate what you do. Please, 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 if you haven't thought about it, voting is here. Early voting has started. Early voting has started, and you, this has been out there. You see the banners all throughout our community. It is so important, and you have gotten the right information. There has not been any misinformation that's been put out about the reasons for this. You've heard from our financial director. You've heard from our superintendent. You've heard from our city manager, our deputy city manager. If you still don't have the right information, please feel free. Our city manager gives out our number all the time. He can hook you up and connect you to our school board and our school board members to give you the right information. Please be encouraged. Councilman Buckner, your comments meant so much to me because we work hard. We work very hard and we don't give ourselves enough credit because sometimes we have to pause from the work that we do to put out the misinformation and it gets frustrating. Um, it gets very frustrating. Once again, Councilman Sherman Saunders, his wife did not pass. It's Councilman Sherman Lee, uh, Mayor Arono, his wife passed. They're from Danville, he and his wife. Our prayers are with him, Councilman Sherman Saunders, Mayor Sherman Saunders, and his wife are doing very well. If that's no more good for the city, this meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>